Hello there. Hello and welcome to my Power Hour. Uh, this is the platform where I share with you some practical experiences and the faithfulness of God as it shines through those experiences. Um, it's not my aim to preach to you or to preach to you, but it's just my aim to share with you um, some of the things I have learned in my journey, uh, maybe from my own personal experience uh, experiences or other people's experiences you know that they have shared with me uh, but the aim is, is just to share the goodness of God and to encourage you in your own journey and so um, it's my power hour also the hour that I uh, get up to to pray to pray you know as the Bible says watch and pray watch and pray um, and, and I'm also uh, also aware of the fact that yes we are going to live for so long but yet the days are so limited and so to do that which i believe i'm led by the holy spirit of god to do um but the more the most important part of the whole thing uh, is to help you understand that god does answer prayers well, whatever it is wherever we're coming from god answers prayers and i want to tell you it's not really about our righteousness or it's not about the fact that we we know god so much or because we are good or we're fantastic no but because of the grace of god because of his love because of his mercy so i thank god for the opportunity to be here once again today you know in the land of the living i thank god for the breath of life and i thank god for the beautiful things happening in our world I thank him for, you know, his faithfulness in my journey. I just give glory to his holy name. Um, in this space, I want to share with you something that the Holy Spirit uh, inspired me to share at this point in time. The job of a mother is a lifetime job. The, 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 the role of a mother is a lifetime job. And... Speaking from experience, I will tell you that that is 100% true. Uh, a mother uh, is not necessarily someone who has given birth to you. Do you know that? A mother could be somebody who was taking you up, adopted you, and playing the role of a mother in your life, in our lives. And so I want to thank God for all the women who are mothers, biological mothers, spiritual mothers, and those who are taking up the role of a mother, maybe as an adopted mother or as a foster carer. You know, I, I just want to thank God for, for your life. Um, the role of a mother is a lifetime one. And I said, speaking from experience, I know what that is. Until I got married, you know, until I started having my own children, actually, I didn't understand the things that a mother 
uh, a mother go, go I mean the mothers go th through I didn't understand that I didn't understand the spiritual part of the whole thing or of the whole journey as well the bond between the mother and the child but when the Lord opened my eyes to certain things certain things that I thought okay my mother did not do certain things you know she wasn't there for me in my own journey but when when I started having my own you know babies my own children and they're growing up as teenagers then I understood exactly the choice as well the choice we make or the choices that we make so if you're a mother and you have the privilege to watch this video I just want you to learn something from here and if you have feedback I'm also open to feedback feed me back as well so when the Lord when when as a woman it doesn't matter if you're having your baby out of marriage um, I'm not saying that is right but I'm saying to you it doesn't matter if your daughter gets pregnant along the way that is not what I'm talking about here now um, I'm not trying to be religious here, but I'm trying to share something with you that is deeper than that. You know, the love of God in all of our journeys. Because none of us can say, oh, yes, I am upright. You know, I'm, do, I'm a Christian and I've been good and I don't tell lies. I don't steal. I don't fornicate. I don't humanize or womanize or whatever. Manize, womanize, whatever we, you know, titles. None of us can come and say that. And so I've had my own journeys as well which I have shared in other videos. Now, when you become pregnant, that in itself is a spiritual journey. Carrying the baby to term also is a blessing from God on its own. And when that child comes, your role changes as a woman, as a lady, your life changes, everything changes. Because now the focus will now be on the child and less focus on yourself. At that particular point in time, you're not able to move forward and do much with your life. At least the, the first few months that the baby arrives, you're not able to do much with your life. That is why as parents, as mothers, it's very important that we prepare our children for the future that they are going into. There are certain things that our parents will not discuss with us because they thought, oh, that's not their responsibility or the child is not old enough or something. No. We need to prepare our children for the future that they are going into. Another school of thought will say, give them a head start in life. And part of the head start that we give our children in life will be the education and not just, uh, uh, not, not just the, the schools, not the colleges or the university, but education about life. Uh, if you are a Christian, for instance, you also teach them the importance of their relationship with God. So the way you relate with them also will help them to understand the relationship that they need to have with God. So that this are part of the head start that they need in life. It's not about just giving them money or putting money in their account. It's all of these things, all of this foundation together that is extremely important. If a child hasn't got a good foundation, there will be nothing. They, they won't be able to build a solid structure. They will not. They will not. The it will be a big struggle. Whereas their mates are going on, but their mates who have got the good head start in life, they are building and they are moving on. These ones who have no head start, who have nobody to teach them anything, to show them anything, they will struggle from the beginning. They will struggle from the, uh, from the scratch. And that is why you see some people, um, they, by the grace of God, they just emerge at the top, while some will just remain at the bottom for the rest of their lives. And they try to break through and they are not able to break through. And some in that process, will just deviate they just go because by all means necessary they want to meet up with their mates and so they begin to dabble into all sort of things so as a mother sorry fathers i'm not saying you're not important in this journey you are extremely important in this journey but even if we trace the history back we will realize that the fathers they provide they go out they provide they make provision and the mothers they nurture the mothers do the practical aspect of rearing the child. The mothers are with the children. They wash the babies. They will dress them, feed them, prepare the meal, teach them, you know, how to relate with people, how to greet, how to... Mother will always do that. And so that's why you see that the bond between the child and the mother is always very strong, especially the male children, as they say. So we have to start from the scratch. But 
in a situation where a mother has failed in the life of the child to carry out those responsibilities and 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 another school of thought said we don't fail even if we don't act in a way we're supposed to act it's not in itself failure that is the child's journey that becomes sorry that becomes the child's journey that becomes the tool that the child will carry and use in the journey so once we get to the stage where we become a mother ourselves we look into what our parents did not do that in our own you know in our own opinion what our parents did not get right and we don't want to repeat the same thing in the lives of our children otherwise it becomes generational curse so if you were not given that proper solid foundation in life you're not given that proper uh training education uh the experiences of life were not shared with you uh, in such a way that you are equipped to go in the journey then you need you need all of god you need all of god as we need all of god in every other thing that we do then you need all of god because it's like you are launching out empty and there's no way you launch out empty the the, the journey will be a struggle so we need all of god so when you have become of age now let's assume your parents your mother did not play the role they're supposed to play in your life. Now you have become an adult. You are now a woman of your own. You now need a higher power to fill the void in your life. So this is where a lot of ladies, a lot of women, this is where we get it wrong. Because we now begin to search for that love that we miss. We now begin to search for it in the man that we meet. And then no man can give you the love that your mother will give you. Just like no human being can give you the love that God will give you. I received something in my spirit some years back. Stop looking for what only God can provide in a man. That which God can provide will only come from God. And when you keep searching for that in a man, you will keep missing it. And then you will miss destiny. So we need to be able to identify when we get to that stage, which is the, you know, which is the, 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 the provisions that God will make in our lives and which is the provision that a man or human being will make in our lives. So when we recognize where our mothers have missed it, then as a mother ourselves, we have to take those things to God. Can you see that when we go round and round and round, we still come back to God. And that's why I keep, you know, expressing, I keep sharing with you the importance of God in my journey. I identify the power of God in my journey. And I just want to share that with you in case you don't know that it is important as a mother to wake up in the middle of the night and pray for your children. It is very important for you, if your children are still with you, to go and whisper some words of prayers in their ears while they are sleeping. It is important to stand or to sit as a priest in the lives of your children. And if you have a husband who believes as well, then that is bonus for those children. And then your husband is also standing in the place of, of, of priest in his home. That is wonderful. But as a mother, you must not fail in that role, in that responsibility. And the Holy Spirit laid it in my heart that the role of a mother is a lifetime responsibility. It's a lifetime job. You don't say, okay, now my children, they are graduates. Okay, now that is it. Uh, let me go, come and enjoy my life. No. Even as human beings, we begin to look forward to our children getting married, having grandchildren. And when they start having grandchildren for us, we want to look after those grandchildren as well. So the role is a lifetime role. And it's the same thing with God Almighty. God is the father, the son, the friend, the helper, the deliverer, everything rolled together in one. And so you will notice that God Almighty does not give up on us. No matter what. That is why 
when we go our ways like prodigal children, go and read the prodigal child in the Bible. When we move our ways as a prodigal child, the point we realize that we've missed it, we make a U-turn, we come back to God. He's always there. You will always find God. You will always meet God. You will always find the mercy of God. He will always answer the prayers. He will always come true. And he doesn't rub it in our face like, look at you, for 10 years you've gone, you've wasted your life, you've wasted your destiny, now you're coming back. You think what? You just want to come back and fill the void again? No, you've missed it, so you need to be punished. God does not really treat us like that. But his arms are always open and he receives us. And he helps to rebuild us again. He remolds us. He reshapes us. And then he sends us forth again. I was sharing with two of my sisters yesterday. We went for a uh, coffee somewhere, you know, and we were discussing, we were sharing experiences, comparing notes um, on our journeys with God, you know, our businesses, our work and everything generally. And, you know, we, we were having this kind of conversation about how God helps us in our journeys about how we you know we always come back to the glory of god to the help of god that even when we miss it god is always there he never gives up um, on us we, even when we we don't realize we don't feel that he's working at the end of the day we we get to know later that yes god has been at work in our lives so we were comparing us and we were you know having this heart to heart discussion a mother should provide that constant stability in the lives of their children. You should be that constant stability, a place of refuge in the lives of your children or in the life of your child. Either they are your biological children or they are your adopted children or they are your spiritual children. Uh, uh, the teenagers are very difficult to manage. Very, very, extremely difficult to marry, uh, manage. When they get to that stage, you need the wisdom of God to help them. Now, the, the, the work begins while they are toddlers. We need to be present in their lives. And when I say present, I don't mean just being there, but I mean being with them in the stages, being conscious of what is going on, what they are developing, the characters, the attitudes they are picking up, they are developing, so that we can begin to prune and trim as necessary, you know, while they are toddlers. Either you're Christian, you're Muslim, you're whatever religion you are, you belong to. This is not about your religion. This is now about your role and responsibility. Because they pick up some things as toddlers as well. And when we don't notice that and we don't help to correct that, they grow up into that assuming... Well, that is how it is. And then we then think, oh, that's their character. I don't know where they picked that up from. No. So we need to be present as mothers. As a mother, we need to be present in the lives of our children. We need to be there. And then when they begin to grow and they become teenagers, and that is another stage entirely. My children, they taught me a lot. My son, especially my first son, taught me a lot about how to be patient with a teenager. Because every time we get to a point... I will now remember my mother. I will now remember how my mother dealt with that stage of my life. And I will say, oh, oh, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do it this way. I'm not. So I have a reference. So there's no manual for motherhood. No manual. You can't say, okay, okay, when you get to this point and your child be behaves like this, okay, this is what you need to do. Like add two cups of sugar, add 250 mils of water. And, no, we don't get it. It doesn't come like that. And so, mother, as a Christian, this is where you need a backup of heaven. Because we don't have wisdom to respond to all the things that our children will bring, especially at that stage when, when, when they become teenagers. Because that is the stage that a child thinks, oh, I know it all. I can take care of myself. I have knowledge. You know, this is my right. This is not... That, that stage is another serious stage. And you need to be present, not just only present, you need to be active, you need to be alert, and you need to be ready to put 
action to every plan. Whatever is coming, you need to be able to stand and trim it away immediately. And say, no, not here. This is not going to stay here. And you, you don't do it with a physical strength. You take it back to God as well. As, as you exert your authority at that stage, you also take it back to God, especially this generation. They, they, they got all sort of titles for them, Gen Z and Gen whatever. This computer age children, this internet children, this millennia children, and they call some of them the, the, the lockdown babies. You need to be, you need a backup of heaven. You need a backup that is spiritual to handle these children. Because they belong, they, it's like they live in another, another realm that is different from this realm that we are in. And so you need the backup of heaven to help you nurture them at that stage, to help you train them at that stage of their lives. Because if we miss it that stage, at that stage, if we miss it, it will take the power of God to mend it back. So we don't want to miss that stage. And then we need to remember that they become like seed in our hands. So when you plant the seed and you don't look after it once it starts to germinate, you're not looking after it, you're not protecting it, and it dries off, then there will be a problem. Because to be honest with you, we are preparing for our retirement, for our old age, Whatever we um, save, deposit, contribute into the lives of our children while they are growing up, we are also preparing for our old age. Because it's either in old age we retire indeed and have peace of mind to enjoy the fruits of our labor as we see them progress in life, as we see them thrive in their businesses, in their jobs. They bring us joy as we see peace in their lives, as we see their home, you know, they get married and they, you know, if they want to get married, because some of them will tell you they don't even want to get married. God help us. So you see them progressing. That brings you joy and peace of mind. But when they get to that certain stage and things are not going well, the way things should go for them, then we, it brings us sadness. We don't have peace of mind. And then we now begin to fast and pray for them. Things that we should have done in the past, we now begin to do in our old age. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying if you are there 24-7, 100%, that things will not go wrong. Things can still go wrong. There will be challenges. There are challenges peculiar to every human being in our journeys. There are things we will go through as human beings as long as we are on the surface of this earth. We are breathing. There are things we will go through. So don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not saying, oh, everything will just be fine because you've been there with them in the journey. They won't have challenges. They will. And that is why the Holy Spirit wants me to remind you that the role of a mother is a lifetime job. It's not like, oh, yes, we're done. We're finished. Okay, you can go now. You can be on your own. You are now independent. No, we still need to continue to support them in prayers. We still need to leave the door open so they can come back to us. When they have challenges, they should trust us enough to come back and say, Mom, I messed up yesterday, Mom. This is what i done, and this is what happened. And we can say, let's take it to God. Let's pray about it. I trust God. I believe God. Of course, they've seen the pattern of your life that when something happens, they know it's prayer. They know, they understand. So at that stage, they're not even arguing with you. You go into fasting, you go into praying, you lay down that issue before God and you wait as God will come through concerning that issue. So we don't give up on our children. Mother, maybe you are in a place at this point in time where you're thinking, oh, this child, you know, don't kill me. Don't, ki don't kill me. I've done enough. No, we never do enough. We never. Our job will not finish until we come to the end of our journey in the lives of our children it's a continuous job as god will not give up on us he doesn't give up so we cannot afford to give up on our children we are the earth that produces the virtues that they need to move on and thrive we have certain authority over their destiny 
And part of the authority is guiding them through life. Part of the authority is teaching them and being firm and consistent in their lives. And being that place of re refuge, constant place of refuge for them. So they know that whatever happens, I got my mother's backing. I can always come back to my mother. Even if the whole world turns against me, I have my mother. And so as long as we are alive, we have a big role to play in the lives of our children. And this message is coming, you know, as I, I'm, I'm releasing this, this message, I'm sharing this with you as the Holy Spirit is inspiring me to say. And I hope you will understand whether it's your own biological children or this these are children you, you adopted or these are children of relatives in your care. As long as they are under your roof and you are taking, you have taken up the role of a mother in their lives, then you know that whatever happens to them will come, affect you as well. No matter what. So we need God. We don't have the wisdom to raise any child. We don't. We don't have the wisdom. Because raising up a child takes much more than money. It's not about the father, oh, we are wealthy. We can provide all that they need. It's not just about money. Raising a child needs more than wealth, more than money. Money is good because it will answer to something, to certain needs in their lives. But the love, the support, correction and the constant constant presence you know it's diff it's diff it's different if someone says to you oh we are here for you we will support you from when somebody say i'm with you i'm in this journey with you we're walking together okay come rain come shine we i'm by your side i'm here i'm by your side and you have an issue and that issue becomes our issue. Uh, and they ask you, what are we going to do about it? Not what are you going to do about it? You know, when something happens, that is a mother. A mother sees the child's challenges as her own challenges. That's why some mothers, you dare not, don't go near their children. Then you will see that they are lioness. You will see the roaring lion come out of them. Don't even try it with their children. They're ready to go up and down with you, stretch up to the length and come back with you. They are. So that is what we need our children to understand. We need to build that confidence in them. That no matter what, you got my back, son. You got my back, daughter. And so today I am talking, I am inspired to talk and share with mothers. So I don't want fathers watching me thinking, oh, oh, is it about mothers? What about the role of the father? I think maybe in another video, if I'm inspired to talk about the role of the father, which is extremely important in the lives of our children. And I think I'll share that in another video so we, know mod we don't model things up. But mother, you are the earth that will produce the virtues that a child needs in their journey. And we shouldn't forget that. And so if, as the earth, we become contaminated, and then we are going to become poisonous in the journey of our children. And we don't want that. And I, I share with you all the time, I can only speak to you from the Christian point of view, because I'm a Christian. That's all I know. I don't know any other method. And so it is important for us as well to define our faith. Stick to your faith. So this is not about, oh, come to Christ. Oh, give your life to Christ. Oh, receive. No. If you see something good in Christians and you love to be part of it, come. This is why as Christians as well, we have big roles, big job, big responsibilities in our lives. So that we make sure wherever we go, we are reflecting the love of God. We are the mirror that people, a lot of people will see and they will say, oh, I love to be a Christian. I love to be like this lady or like, like this man. Oh, I just love him. I just love her attitude. 
and I will want to be a Christian. And so when people have issues, they can come to you like, oh, I can see that you're a Christian. Can you please pray for us? Because they have seen something in you that is different from other people. So it is important for us as mothers to have that relationship with God. And I also to have that relationship with Jesus. So I can only speak, I can only pour from the cup that I have in, you know, in my hands. If there's nothing in my cup, there's nothing I'm going to pour. So I'm sharing with you now from the Christian perspective. Some of the things I've experienced, some of the things I've learned from other people, some of the things I've seen from other people, some of the things we've been told in the Bible growing up and as an adult studying, you know, from the things the preachers have been saying, the pastors have been saying, but most importantly, from the things the Holy Spirit has been releasing. So if a mother becomes contaminated, she will only release toxic virtue into the life of her child. And it will take the God of heaven to cleanse that child's journey so that the child can move at the pace to fulfill destiny, at the right pace to fulfill destiny. Our own relationship with God as mother is important. And we also need to show our children this, uh, this um, relationship with God and the results. We need to help them understand. It is important when there are challenges that you let your children know when you are taking it to God. Not, they don't, it's not just about them seeing the results. Oh, praise God, the Lord has me. Let them understand and see that there's a process in life. When there's a challenge, you take it to God. Teach them how to take their challenges to God. I'm not saying 100% when they become independent, they're going to walk in it. But you are sowing a seed or seeds into their lives. Because the time will come in life when they face certain challenges and they will apply the human wisdom and things will not work. They will remember, hold on a minute. There's another power that is higher than it. There's another wisdom that I can ask for. And they will remember how mommy used to do it, what mommy used to do when mommy gets to this kind of situation. And they will come back to how mommy used to do it. And if mommy is still alive, still around, they come to mommy and say, mom, this is what is going on. Mom, this is what has happened. But I've prayed about it. Mom, can you join me in prayer? And then the two of you can come together and stand in place of agreement and take that issue to God. One of you shall chase a thousand. Two of you shall chase tens of thousands. And the Bible says wherever two, two or more are gathered in my name. He said, I will be in their midst and I will grant their hearts desire. Two or more. That's why, yes, a child is married. They have their spouse or he, she or he, they, they got their spouse. But there's still that place of mother. So if you are a good mother, a godly mother, you will help them to build their home. You won't take over. You won't, you won't lord anything over them. You will not control. You will not manipulate. But you will relate with them in love and with love. You will help them to grow. You will help them to build that relationship. Because times will come in the journey of life, in marriage, the challenges may try to cause a rift. But you as a godly mother, you notice that quickly because you have been through the experiences. You will notice it immediately and you will stand in place of prayer for those children and you're not partial in the way you relate with them yes this is your son and this is your son's wife your son's wife is now your daughter you now imagine if this was your daughter how are you going to handle the case and so you don't stand as a judge in between them but you stand as a mending wall and you bring them together and once they come you remove yourself and you hand them over to god so they can go on in their journeys. 
So the role of a mother is a lifetime job. This is what the Holy Spirit has laid upon my heart to share with mothers. So I don't know where you are right now in your relationship with your children, with your child. I don't know. But for adventure, something is not going well. The relationship is not how it should be. You are having challenges with your children. Woman, you need to rise up as a priest and take this case to God. Stop running helter skelter. Help is not in anywhere. Help is only in God. And you have the authority to stand up in place of prayer. I was saying to a woman, we you know we're having mother heart to heart discussion and she was sharing certain things with me. And I said, you know what? In the midnight, set your alarm, get up in the midnight, go naked as a woman, how God created you and cry unto God concerning your child. There's authority in that. God blessed you with this child. So he's put a responsibility in your hands and you need the backing of heaven to look after that child. That's why I say to God, now I am like a caretaker for this gift that you have put in my hands. Help me to look after these gifts so that they can rise up and succeed in life. I don't have the wisdom to do that. I don't have the capacity to do that. And I haven't got any manual that I can refer to. You are my manual, God. And the Lord has been faithful in my journey and in the journeys of my children. And so I have peace in my life because I see peace in their lives. And woman is the same thing I want for. As you're watching me as a woman, is the same thing I want for you. So if you notice something in the lives of your children that shouldn't be, you have the authority to change that thing. You have the authority to speak and change that situation. As you allow that emotion to rise inside of you, be angry with anything that is negative in the lives of your children. Don't be angry with your children. Don't open your mouth and curse your children. I think once my, my, my son offended me once and I was really angry and I was saying certain things to him. And the Holy Spirit came and said to me, these things that you have set upon your child, you will reap it in future. Can you see what you have said? Now imagine those things you have said coming to pass in his life. Will you be in a place of joy? And so I learned how to caution myself. Not that they won't offend you. Oh my Jesus, these children, they will. But we have to, to help ourselves not to get to that place of anger and we now begin to open our mouth and curse our children we must not because oftentimes whatever we say especially in that place of anger as a mother to our children will come to pass will you as a mother be happy that all the children they are thriving they are moving on getting promotions in their chosen career and they are building and they are flying in your own child it's getting into this trouble and that trouble and ending up in the prison. Will you be happy? Will that bring you joy? No. Ask mothers who are in that situation. They will tell you it doesn't bring joy. It doesn't bring happiness. It doesn't bring peace. You age quickly. Because you are looking at your child and you're not happy. Imagine a child that we pray for every day struggles through life because there are challenges. How much more? A child that we open our mouth and curse. We, you haven't got anything to help your child with. And you are also contributing and cursing. You're contributing to the challenges that they will face in life. No. You want to be that place of refuge for your children. So as God deals with us, as God relates with us, that's the way we need to relate with our children. Unconditional love unconditional love that is what we give to our children when you see a mother child you know being close and happy celebrating and jubilating you see them splash all the pictures on the you know social media and you desire that i tell you what 
is a lot of unforgiveness going on. A lot of arguments, challenges, everything going on. But they have remained together. And if you look at it, most of the time, it will be the mother doing the job. Because these kids, they can just take off. I call them, this generation, I call them selfish generation. They are selfish generation. They don't give a damn. They get their salary, they go and get takeaway, they get home. They haven't got anything they want to eat. They order takeaway, they eat takeaway right in front of you. <laughs> they don't give a damn. The girls, they go and buy their way on. Only a few of them actually think, oh, my mom, oh, my dad, you know, the birthday, the, there's only a few of them. But if we bring them up like that, we help them to understand. That's why it's important for children to understand. When we do something, you let them know, you let them see it. Oh, it's your brother's birthday. Let's go and get a card for your brother. And let's, you know, oh, let's save up. We're putting this money aside. This is the money we're going to use to buy Christmas gifts or, or birthday gifts. If you believe in all of the birthday gifts for ourselves, buy a card for your dad or buy a handkerchief for your dad. Save money from your, um, from your dinner money. Put aside one pound, 50p, 20p from your dinner money and save it up. And then take that money. Let's go and get a gift for your dad. On Father's Day, let's go and get, you know, get, get a gift for your mom on Mother's Day. Let's buy something for your brother. It's your brother's birthday. Even if it's chocolate, even if it's chocolate, one pound chocolate, make sure they save that money. 10 P from their dinner money. Teach them to do that and buy a card and chocolate for your brother and say, brother, you know, this is happy birthday, brother. Celebrate the little days. You know, you don't have to be rich before you celebrate the, you know, the good days, those important occasions, birthdays. We teach them that. Oh, we're going to cook something special today. It's your brother's birthday. And we wake up. Oh, let's go and pray for your brother. You know, you go in the brother's room. Happy birthday to you. You celebrate. You pray together. Let them see all those things. They are very important. Because we are pouring into them. We are depositing something into them. And these things, when they grow up, these things stay with them. And so if you are in that position now where your relationship with your child is not the way it should be or where your child becomes rebellious, maybe because of external factors, too many external factors or peer pressure, whatever it is, or maybe your family situation is not conducive and they can't bear it, this children, they can't bear it. Things are just not the way they should be between mother and child. And this is causing, causing, um, causing some grief for you. Then, woman, I invite you to take it to God the Creator. He's our help in times of need. He does not give up on us. He's our first love. Our mother, our father, our helper, our is our everything, our maker. In his God power over all his creations. He's got power to intervene and turn things around. Don't complicate the matter by running helter skelter. Complaining to A, complaining to B, going to this prophet and that prophet. Uh, doing this and that. I'm not saying you should not go to prophets and you should not go to pastor. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying take it first to God. And even nowadays, you need to be, be careful. Who is this prophet that you are going to hand over the destiny of ch your child to? Have you tested that spirit and you're sure they operate with and in the spirit of God? The Holy Spirit, they are led by the Holy Spirit have you tested that spirit and you are sure before you now take a whole destiny, the destiny of your child and put in their hands and they start to manipulate and make matters worse for you? Are they operating in line with the, you know, the, the, the mind of God, that church, or you're just looking for a quick fix? If Satan gives you anything, if anyone on your behalf is consulting the darkness world, the occultic world, 
on your behalf and you're deceiving yourself saying, well, it's not me that's gone there. I just went there for prayers. And instead of praying and believing and walking in that journey with God, with you, they go in the background and employ, you know, all, all these occultic practices. You have gone to make a deposit, to make a sacrifice. You have gone to lay your child on the altar of sacrifice in the dark world. Whatever Satan gives, he takes back double. He will wait at a point that you don't expect. He will take it back double. But when you walk and work with God, you cooperate with God, and, he, and you go through the process, the due process, and you allow God to take care of that and resolve that issue, you will see that it's going to be joy. It gets better, it gets better, it gets better until the coast becomes clear for your child to thrive. How do you feel inside of you about your child? What are your thoughts about your child? Those are spiritual things first and foremost because you are the earth. And inside this earth is the soil healthy is it fertile for this seed to grow and bear fruit so our mind our spirit is also very important in helping to build the destiny of our children so woman remember our job our roles our responsibilities over our children and in their lives are lifetime jobs, lifetime responsibility in this world that we found ourselves. You can say, oh, they're, they're, they're graduates now, my job is done. No, your job is not done. Your job is just starting in another level. It's, you know, your job has just graduated. <laughs> when your child graduates, your job, your role has also graduated. So you're going on another level now. All that responsibilities, challenges, you're still going that journey with your child. Oh, now it's time for me to now, you know, enjoy myself. Oh, go, go and do your life. Let me also do my life. But in the background, you are still standing in place of prayer, interceding for your children. You're still watching like an eagle. Anything that's not part of the destiny, part of the uh, agreements with God. No, we uproot it immediately. We don't wait for it to germinate and say, well, maybe when it grows, maybe the fruit will be good. No, you notice it right from there. Uproot it immediately. So we remember that our responsibility, our role. Oh my goodness. I would need my glasses to read some of the comments coming up. Thank you so much. God bless you. You're welcome, ma. God bless you, ma. God bless you, ma. Thank you for joining me, ma. God bless you, ma. So our role continues. And so when we get to our old age, we will be able to enjoy the fruits of our labors. You don't even need to chase your children to bless you at that point in time. Because they know, they see, they see the challenges that, you know, you, we, we've been through. They see the battles. They see that God, mom was constantly there. I have that peace and I have that confidence that my mom is always there and they can always, always come back. It's a terrible thing if a child will find himself or herself in a situation and there's nobody to trust, including the mother, that every, and there'll be times that people around you will fail you. And then you will remember my mother that's why people, some people, they cry when their mother, you know, leave them. They, if their mothers are dead and, you know, they've gone to rest. They cry. They'll say, oh, if only my mother was alive. Oh, I trust my mother. They want to discuss deep things that they cannot share with a friend or even with a husband sometimes. You remember certain things and you just remember your mother. Either you're a man or a woman, and you cannot pick your phone and say, Mom, can you pray along with us? Ah. At that point in time, they need you, and they cannot connect with you just because 
you are not you don't have uh how to say you don't have good relationships ah uh, it's it will hurt that child at that point in time oh what kind of a mother is this but when they remember that you know what whatever happens i can always call my mother and she will rise up in place of prayer with us that boosts their confidence in their journey as well and they can take risks because they know that, you know, I've got the backing of my mother. I've got the backing of heaven. I've got my relationship with God Almighty and I've got my mother's support. And so they see things differently. I've got my mother's love that is genuine, unconditional. They see world differently and they approach life differently. And so mothers, I believe the Holy Spirit wants me to share with you today. That your role in the lives of your children are a lifetime job. Your position in the life of your child is a lifetime responsibility. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying when they're married, you should start poke nosing and controlling and being in charge. No, 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 no. You don't have a place there. Once your child, your son is married, his wife becomes his love. Oh, yes, you are the, the grand love. But his wife, her husband, allow them to make their own decisions because it's their journey. There are things they cannot discuss with you that they don't want to discuss with you. It's, it's their thing. And that's the way they want it to be. If they want you to know, they will tell you. If you sense something, take it to God. Pray about it. And wait for them to discuss with you. Don't pock nose. It's not your home. It's not your house. No, that is their home. That is their house. They want to build it their own way. All you can do is pray along with them. Support them as much as you can. When they ask for help, do what you can do. As a mother. But there's a place of authority, a place of prayer, a place of refuge forever and ever until our journey ends here on earth. As a mother, that position will not change. We hold that position. We, we are like that firm foundation for them. We are God's representative in their lives. We are God's ambassadors in their lives, in their journey. And you... Remember, even God has given us free will to choose, to make choices. And so let them operate in their own free will because it's their journey. You and your husband, you have, you know, gone through your own journey. You have done it your own way. You have made your own choices. Allow them to make their own choices. Allow them to make even their own mistakes as well because they will learn from it. It's their journey. They will learn from it. But you stand in place that place of a, of a priest, a priesthood, and continue to pray for them. Continue to pray with them if they want you to. Don't impose yourself on your daughter-in-law, your son-in-law. Uh, in -law. Don't do that. Allow them to go through their journeys. But just have it at the back of your mind. In the midnight, that's your son or that's your daughter or your daughter-in-law or your son-in-law. You got to open that door. Even if it's midnight, you got to open that door and say, what can I do for you? I'm here. I'm always here. And let them know, I'm always here. What is it? Calm down. God is in absolute control. We're going to pray. We're going to take it to God. And I trust God. And of course, they have seen how God has been working in your life, you know, in their lives. When you pray, you know, when we agree, they've seen because they grew, they've grown up looking, I mean, seeing all these things. And even if they did not, maybe you met Christ after you've given your uh, birth to your children, they are grown ups and things have happened. Let them know when you receive this gift that I now walk with God, I now operate with God and pray and go on, you know, in place of prayer for them. And I pray that the Lord will help us. There's no manual for motherhood. And I don't want you to think maybe you're having challenges, you know, with your children. I don't want you to think you have failed. No. Maybe they have not turned out the way you desired. Maybe things 
are not working for them the way it should be. I don't want you to feel like you have failed. There are no failures in the manual of God. There are just people who have made choices that are not maybe right, appropriate for that situation. And God is able to correct. He is able to rebuild, to mend, to heal. He's able to restore. Just trust in the Lord. First and foremost, you don't take your issues to any human being if you have not taken it to God first. When you see something, when you note something is not in place, is not right, you as a mother, you take it to God, the creator first. Speak with your God. Speak to your creator first before you share it with any human being. So that God becomes the foundation of that solution. And whoever you want to speak to, you will be inspired by the Holy Spirit. So that you are not sharing with the wrong people. My, there, there's something, there's, there's, there's a proverb that's my, or an adage, that my, the elderly people in my tribe that they say, that a, a thin layer, a thin layer of skin covers the stomach. And so you're not able to see what the, 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 what the, what the inside of a wicked person looks like. What the mind of a wicked person looks like. You're not able to see because the flesh has covered it up. Imagine if God gives us the opportunity to see what people think about us, what, the, what people plan for us, the mind of other people for us. Imagine if that was possible, but it's not. That is why we need to take things to God first and, and, and lay it there. Lay it in the hands of God before you begin to talk to human beings, especially in matters relating to your children or with your children. Take it to God first. Pray about it first as a mother. And if there are people you trust, brothers and sisters you trust in your church, that is also fantastic. But make sure that you've tested their spirit. <laughs> that is where the job lies. Make sure you've tested their spirit. And you are vibrating on the same level, on the same frequency. If you're not, don't do it. Don't do it. The world has changed. In the olden days, people would take issues to pastors and they trust their pastors or prophets. Or, and they trust them because they, they, they walk and work with God. You know, they allow the Holy Spirit to use them, you know, to work. But nowadays, people are just, they just want this power by force. They want wealth by force. And so people delve into all sorts of things. They put their hands into all sorts of things. And all of us will still come in the surface and lift up holy hands and call upon the name of Jesus because God is merciful. He does not strike us down in anger and, and expose us, expose our evil deeds. And so it's very easy for the wolves to show you that they are, you know, to, to appear to you like they are sheep. But in, in actual fact, they are wolves. So we have to be extremely careful in the world that we are in. Trust no human. Don't say, oh, I trust so, 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 so. You will be amazed. So, 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 and so is the one digging the hole for you. God forbid. Trust should not be the first thing. God should be the first thing. Trust God, only God first. And then let the Holy Spirit lead you. To other humans that you can share with or bring other humans into your life that can, you know, stand in the place of prayer, you know, encouragement with you in that journey. And I'm not saying we'll get it right 100% all the time. Sometimes when some issues happen, you just want to pour it out. You're disturbed, you know. We, we, when we get disturbed, as, as mothers, we just want to share with somebody about me. You know, that's my language. Please help me. You know, we cry out. Please help me. Help me concerning this child. This is what is going on. Oh, please. And then we begin to develop high blood pressure and all of those things. But let us remember the place of God. The undisputable, victorious warrior who can help us through that journey. Let us remember that. So at the end of the day, our relationship with God, that personal relationship with God 
is extremely important. We go to church, we hear our pastors, we hear messages, we fellowship with our brethren, but we should still be able to come back. That is important. We should still be able to come back and have that fellowship with God, that person, a fellowship with God, where we take our issues to him and the Holy Spirit will enlighten us, will shed more light into that journey, will teach us, inspire us. We need that. Whatever we do, whoever we mingle with or fellowship with, that place with God is still very important. If you don't have that, then you are running your engine on empty. And you cannot run an engine on empty. I mean, engine on empty. It won't run. It will knock. And so many of us, we, our engines have knocked. And we are stagnant. But we don't know. Many of us, our relationship with the brethren is fantastic. Our relationship with our pastors, oh, top notch. But we have no responsibility. We have no personal uh, relationship with God. Yes, we have relationship with humans, which is good. We need that because we are not walking. Uh, we're not working and walking in isolation. We have a family of God that we can say, pray for me, please. I am tired. I am weak. I am weary. Pray for me, please. And they can lift you up in prayers at that point in time. That is very important. And that's why also it's important that you watch the family of God where you fellowship. Are they really your family? Do you feel loved? Do you feel welcomed? Do you feel free to share your issues? That's very important. Because when the days will come that are evil, you will have the support. You will have people standing in the gap for you and lifting up your case before God. But if you find yourself in the wrong gathering, that will be extremely difficult. And that's why a lot of Christians, they run up and down. They don't have the confidence to share their issues with their brethren in church. They will start running up and down. And then this person will give them the phone number to this prophet and the phone number to this pastor and the phone number to... And then they go up and down. They, they, they're disturbed. But your personal relationship with God, when things happen, you remember God first. And you take it to God. Help me, Father. Send me help us, oh Lord. I am tired. I am weary. Lord, help me. With God, we can be real. We can say it as a tease with god and the more we relate with god the more we are led by the holy spirit the more we obey the clearer we can hear god because god will always always instruct us in what to do in the way to go when we take our issues to him so mother this is what the holy spirit laid upon my heart to discuss with you today our roles our jobs in the lives of our children are a lifetime responsibility we don't retire and we don't get tired until such a time when we return home we're still part of our children's journey yes a time comes that we need to let them go and run their own lives but they should always remember that we are here a place of refuge for them from life from challenges they know that when they take an issue to God as adults, they can also ask mom to pray along. Mom, pray, remember us in your prayers. They should still be able, because we need that human relation, human relationship. We need that. As much as we can talk to God, we can have relationship with God, we still need that human relationship. You as a mother should be the first point of human contact. I'm not leaving the fathers out of this, but the message is for the mothers in this video. And I hope you've learned something. I hope you've gained something. Are you a mother and your relationship with your child or your children is not healthy? In fact, the relationship is zero. Maybe you're not even on talking terms. They're not relating with you. You don't even have access to see your grandchildren. 
They don't involve you in anything anymore. You have no clue what's going on in their lives. Or maybe your child has broken down under peer pressure and they are in some places that you as a mother, you are even ashamed to say. I wouldn't tell you that God knows about all of these things. I will pray with you as well. Heavenly Father, we bless you, O oh Lord, for this day. We thank you for this new opportunity to witness your blessings, your fresh blessings for today. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the words that we've sent out, O oh Lord, into the airwaves on this platform. And Father, I am lifting up mothers, ourselves. I, we, I'm a mother myself. We lift ourselves up before you, Jehovah God. We ask, O oh Lord, that you help us first and foremost to understand the importance of our relationships with you and to come into that place, that place of comfort, that place of trust, that place of refuge in you, O Lord. That we recognize that you are our source so that when we are in need or going through challenges, we can always come to you, our source, and you can fill us up with all that we need to handle the situation because we know you will always come through for us. And so, Father, I want to pray with mothers that are already going through challenges with their children or with their child. You are the maker of all things. And you have given us responsibilities. These ones, they are your heritage, O oh Lord. This gift that you have placed in our hands. Their destinies are in your hands, O oh Lord. And you know the plans that you have for them as well. And so, Lord, we are standing in place of prayer for the mothers that are going through these challenges. And we also pray for the children that the Holy Spirit will minister to these children and minister to the mothers as well. And that you will bring them back together again. That you will restore the destiny of these children, of this child, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. That we help to mend ways. In the name of Jesus. That this broken relationship father. You will mend it. And bring the mother and the child and the children. Back together again. In the name of Jesus. We trust you father. That you can do this. Because it is your mind. For every family. That Satan is waging war again. Because Satan is at war. Against families. Pulling down marriages. Tampering with destinies. Of these innocent children. Father we ask Lord. That you rise in your might and power. And restore. Homes. Marriages. Relationships. In the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy. Do that which only you can do. God of restoration. Victorious warrior. We commit this kind of battles and all the battles and the challenges in our lives into your mighty hands. And we believe, Lord, that you will take us through and give us the victory so that we can also testify to your faithfulness in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord, I thank you. Because when I call you, Lord, when I call you, Baba, you hear me. When you hear, Lord, you grant my desires. And when you grant those desires, Lord, you release the manifestation. And I see the manifestations of the answers. Even now, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you do not fail. Thank you, Father, for the relationship that you are restoring now. For the homes, Lord, marriages that you are restoring and rebuilding. Thank you, Father, for the mother-child relationship that you are restoring again. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, dear Lord, I commit my family to into your hands. My parents, I thank you, Lord, for their lives. My mother, Lord, I bless your holy name for her life. I thank you, Lord, for the good health, your blessings upon their lives. I thank you, Father, because they remain my pillar, my helper. And they stand in that place of prayer for me as well as priests in my life. 
I thank you, Lord, because I can always go back and, 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 and speak about my challenges. And I know that I got the backings, the backup, that I'm not alone in my journey. Thank you, wonderful Father, for my children. I bless your holy name, O oh Lord, for the joy they give me and how you help them, Lord, in their journeys. I thank you, Father, because you always show up. I bless your holy name, Lord, for my siblings, for my cousins, oh Lord, around the world as well. I pray, Father, that they will continue to encounter your faithfulness and they will know you more and more, Lord, and walk in your light in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for nature faithfuls, the natural skincare business you place in my hands. And I bless your holy name for the, the love, the support, and the, and the patronage that I'm getting, Lord, from around the world. The interest that people are showing in the products. And I bless your holy name, Lord, because I know that these products, they, you said to me that they are like healing balms. And I bless your holy name that these products will also do that, which anybody that wants to use them, wants them to do. That which we say they would do, they will, the products will do. I thank you, Lord, for my customers for my supporters, for my well-wishers. I bless you, Lord. Thank you for the people with the feedback, both the negative and the positive feedback. I thank you, Lord, because we use all of the feedback to, to, to work on the product, to improve on the product, to improve on the services. And I bless your holy name for all of them. I pray, Lord, that my customers, my supporters, they will feel your love. They will know your love. They will experience your faithfulness in their various journeys. In the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, I thank you for the church of God. For women's in Christian fellowship, Lord, I bless your holy name. For the love that we enjoy, the fellowship that we have in your presence together, Lord, I thank you. I commit Living Spring Chapel into your hands, Lord, because that church is, that church is also part of me. I am part of that as well. And I thank you, Lord, as I lift that church up before you, that your love will flow in that church, O oh Lord. That you will indeed be the head and lead, O oh Lord. Help the pastors. Help the leaders. Help the members as well, Lord. And let us all remember in our journeys that you are our source. So we're not in competition or rivalry with one another, but we are working collectively as one body with one goal to please you and to show your love to the world around us wherever we go. In the mighty name of Jesus, help us, Father. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. There's so many wonderful people supporting me, Lord, on my media work, on social media. So many people that I've never met before who have become like brothers and sisters and fathers and mothers and friends. I pray, Lord, that you are able, because the star above the world, above the, the, the earth, we see, we all see. The moon shines for everybody, and the sun gives us light for everybody. The rain falls, and we all feel the impact. And so I know, Lord, that you are able to touch everybody across the world. And so I am committing all of those people into your hands. I pray, Lord, that as they have become family, that you will also be their family and meet them, Lord, at the points of their needs. And be faithful to them as they hear the words that I share, words of encouragement that I share, O oh Lord, that these words, O oh Lord, will also make impacts in their life. Draw them closer to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah God. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, because when I call upon you, you hear me. Even these prayers, these requests, these petitions that I've placed before you, Lord, I know. That beyond my articulation, Lord, beyond my wisdom, Lord, you will hear and you will come. You will answer. You will release blessings, O oh Lord. And we will see the manifestations, Lord, in real life, in practical life, in our everyday life, Lord. We will see you. We will find you. We will know you. We will enjoy those blessings in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And I just pray that the Lord, you know, we always walk with us in our journey. So please remember um, my daughter, Rosalind Jacob. She's my darling daughter of Zion. 
um, the, the wonderful lady that God placed in my life. And we have that connection. And God is our connection. Um, remember to subscribe to her YouTube channel. Um, I, I use her music every now and then so that at least you have a taste, a foretaste of what her music is like. Please remember to subscribe to her YouTube channel, Rosalind Jacobs. And, you know, there are fantastic worship songs there for situations, different situations of life. So remember, subscribe to her YouTube channel. Uh, I'm just going to go now. Uh, commits all of us into the hands of God and the rest of our journeys. I pray that God will be faithful to us in Jesus' name. So yes, um, let me take, let me go and get my favorite. She's got loads, 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 loads of worship songs. Um, yeah. The place to know your voice And, and the, the place, place to know your will Take me to the place Where I mm -hmm. wanna Thank be you, Oh God Take me to the place Amen. Where I wanna be Take me to the place Yes, visit our YouTube channel for more. I'll just acknowledge the wonderful people that have popped in and, you know, been in this journey with me today. Uh, dear brother, Lalandi Peter, God bless you, sir. Thank you so much for joining. Mommy Ade Joke Williams, good morning, ma. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Mosolupe Aces, thank you so much. Long time. God bless you. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you all, and Dr. Ayodurungbe as well. I think you've been around as well, popped in and popped out. God bless you. Thank you for, you know, supporting these. This is just the platform where I share, you know, my experiences, uh, God's faithfulness in my journey, uh, the experiences of other people as well that, you know, I've learned from. I just share it to encourage us and to point us back to God. In everything, we should always remember it's God. It starts with God. And it's going to end with God. He's our source. He's the one who can lead us through this uncertain world, uncertain journeys of our lives. So please, and when I keep saying your relationship with God, you know, personal relationship with God, I am not saying you can, you should not fellowship with other brethren, but I am saying test all spirits. As the world is now, nothing is certain. And we cannot take people just by the face value anymore. It's not because somebody is coming to preach Jesus to you that you will assume that, yes, they are really with Jesus. It doesn't work like that anymore. As, as somebody has been recruiting people and inviting them to church and saying he's going to do this. But we found out at the end of the day that it was actually taking people, like kidnapping people. So people use the name of Jesus for anything they like. So we have to be careful. We have to you know, allow the spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, you know, the spirit of discernment to help us in the choices we will make, in the decisions we will be making in our journeys in life. It's extremely important. Very, very important. If you're not part of them, then don't belong with them. Don't roll with them. Be distinct 
and be certain. That's what I have learned in the journey. I, I do not choose religion for people and I do not insult people based on the religion they have chosen to practice. But what I say is you practice your religion. That's okay. Allow me to practice mine. I am not a religious person. I'm not about religion, but I am about love. I'm about how you treat other people as well. I'm about the kind of love, the kind, because if we say we are all serving God, we believe in God, then all of us should be vibrating similarly, irrespective of the, of the religion you have chosen. But for me, what works for me is the name of Jesus. And I will never be afraid to share that with the world. The name of Jesus has worked for me. It's still working for me because I looked into the journeys of my life and I know that it can only be God and not anybody else. And so I am returning all the glory to God. In everything I do, I just want to return all the glory to God who has chosen me to be a beneficiary of his love, a beneficiary of his mercy, of his grace, of his divine healing, divine touch. So I am returning the glory. I'm returning to give glory to God as a beneficiary of his blessings that is all that i am doing i'm not here to preach to you i am not here to force you to come to church i'm not even here to force you to read the bible but if there's something i'm saying that resonates with you maybe you're going through that thing and i told you that i've been through that thing and god took me through and he's used many people for me in my journey people that i did not know and even people that i know god has used everyone around me to bless me one way or the other people have blessed me positively people have blessed me negatively and all of these things work together for my good at the end of the day and so i learned i am learning i learn from other people's experiences i learn from the bible i learn from my pastors you know and from my own personal experiences too i learn and i know that God is real and the power of God is real. And so he can be that place of refuge that we can run to. And in this video, I have shared with you what the Holy Spirit laid upon my heart. Mother, your role is a lifetime responsibility. Your role in the life of your children, biological children, uh, spiritual children, adopted children, whatever. But anyone that you stand in the position as a mother in their lives. It is important to remember that that role is a lifetime role. And I pray that Jehovah God will help us. Thank you so much for watching, for joining me in this video. And, you know, any time of the day that you're watching this, God bless you. Thank you.